Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're going to go over the mechanical and shop portion of the ASVAB military placement exam. I have 20 practice problems. What I'd highly recommend you do is have a notebook out and a pencil ready to take it like an actual test. Watch the problem, pause the video, do the problem in your notebook, take notes. That process of taking notes is what helps it stick in your head. And then unpause the video and then watch what the solution is and how I do the problem. A lot of this stuff is really from spending time in shops. If you watch a lot of other videos on just working on cars, um, working in a shop, it'll also help build some knowledge here. But this will give you an idea of what the shop and mechanical portion of the ASVAB is all about. All right, let's get started. Okay, problem number one, when the clutch is engaged on a manual transmission, the clutch pedal will be down, up, halfway, down, halfway up. Well, those two don't even make sense because they're the same thing, right? Halfway down is the same as halfway up. And what they're really talking about, I think here, is that the transmission is engaged. So the car will be running, the engine and transmission will be meshed together and engaged when the clutch pedal is up. Uh, and then when you push clutch pedal in, it pushes those two things apart. So the correct answer is up. Remember to pause the video, do the problem before I do it. Number two, when a spark plug fired, it is part of which stroke? The majority of our gas engines are four stroke engines, meaning that they go down, they draw air in, they compress it, it is ignited with a spark plug, that explodes and pushes it down, and then it does an exhaust stroke to get the burnt gases out. So a spark plug fires, that is part of the power stroke, answer A. Number three, most automobile engines are two-stroke, three-stroke, four-stroke, six-stroke cycle engines. Again, um, pause the video, do the best you can, unpause, watch how I do it. Most cars are four-stroke engines, those four strokes I just mentioned. Two-stroke engines are when you add oil into the gasoline. Um, and then the power stroke, exhaust stroke, are in a single stroke. So they run a lot higher, but you have to add oil into the gasoline to lubricate them. Number four, the piston of an internal combustion engine fits inside the, pause the video, do the best you can, and then unpause. Well, the piston is actually that thing that travels inside the cylinder. The cylinder is what contains it. There's a push rod on there pushing, and that's how the energy is transmitted. Um, out of the engine. So the correct answer, answer B, cylinder. Number five, compared to a regular nail, a finishing nail has a larger head, larger head, larger head, smaller head. Um, this is actually a typo on this PowerPoint right here. I don't know if you can see it in the dark here, but a finishing nail has a really small head versus a regular nail has that big head. It's called a finishing nail because when you use it, it's in finished carpentry. You recess that nail uh, and then put wood fill over so you can't see it. A regular head nail like that, really big, um, so it doesn't penetrate the wood and keeps everything strong. So D is certainly a smaller head. I don't think it has a larger diameter. Um, I think that's a typo. Uh, number six, we're jumping all over the place. We're doing carpentry, cars, and now we're doing welding. An arc welding TIG stands for, go ahead and pause the video, mark your answer down. Uh, TIG is tungsten inert gas, so it's answer B. Uh, how TIG welders work, MIG welders work, all welders work, you can't actually weld with oxygen there, so you have to create a, a way to keep the air out of there. And then the way you do it with the TIG welder is around the wire feed, there's a gas, an inert gas, um, getting pushed in to create a little dome. So it's tungsten inert gas. Number seven, to fuse metals with gas welding, how do you do that? Um, pause the video, give it a good guess, or hopefully you know that. Um, it's called the oxyacetylene welder because it's a mix of oxygen and acetylene to produce the flame. They're the two big bottles uh, when you torch weld. So correct answer, answer A. Okay, over to number eight, automotive uh, problem. The brushes in an alternator ride on the commutator, the stator, slip rings, or the heat sink. So the brushes in the motor is where the electricity is transferred to the core. So they got to travel over something. It's usually called a collector ring or slip rings. And that's usually what wears out. 
as well. So the correct answer for number eight is C, slip rings. Number nine, battery electrolyte is a mixture of distilled water and, go ahead and take your guess and then unpause the video. Well, the most common battery we use is a lead acid battery. That acid um, has a chemical reaction with the lead and creates uh, the electricity. So we actually use sulfuric acid in our batteries primarily for that reaction to happen. Okay, we're back to engines, uh, four-stroke engines. It's called a four-stroke engine. The four-stroke cycle um, is which one of these four? Well, you do intake first. So B, you could knock out. C, you could knock out. So it's either A or D. So you intake, power compression. Well, that doesn't make sense. Remember, because you got to draw the air in, compress it, ignite it, power exhaust. So answer D is the correct answer. Uh, more automotive problems. Again, I just watch auto videos on how to fix your car to pick up a lot of this vocabulary. Going through this video, all this is going to do is kind of give you example problems to know what to expect. Learning this material, um, you really need to kind of spend time in a shop. You could probably just go into a shop somewhere and say, could I just spend a couple hours watching you work? And if you are going to do that, make sure you, you remember not to talk when you're in there and don't get in the way. Okay, what kind of wrench should be used to tighten engine components such as manifolds and cylinder heads? A torque wrench, a pneumatic wrench, a ratchet or a socket. It is really important those bolts get tightened up to a very specific um, specification. You do that with a torque wrench. So answer A is the correct answer. A torque wrench, you pull a certain amount, it'll click at a, a certain spec that you have set it to. Pneumatic means air power. A ratchet just means it'll reverse and keep going. And a socket is the actual thing you put on a ratchet. Correct answer, A. Still on the car right here, number 12, a catalytic converter is part of what system? Fuel, ignition, cooling, emission control system. Well, if you've ever had your cut off your car, it's because there's a lot of valuable uh, metals in it. It is part of the exhaust system and it controls the amount of pollution you put out. So it's part of the emission control system, answer D. Number 13, if one complete revolution of the steering wheels goes all the way around, causes the wheels to turn 20 degrees, what's the ratio? Well, if a full revolution is 360 degrees, if you go 20, you want to do 360. I don't know if it's too dark to see this. 360 divided by 20. Those zeros will cancel. 36 divided by 2 is 18 to 1. And that's your ratio right there. Answer C, a ratio of 18 to 1. Number 14, which part of the fuel system sprays fuel and air into the engine's combustion chamber? Well, fuel pump pumps the fuel through the system. An injector actually injects the air-fuel mixture in. So the correct answer is answer B. C, a fuel filter that makes sure no little particles are pulled up out of the tank and put into the engine. Fuel pressure regulator um, that allows, you know, that's going to regulate pressure. So the correct answer is the injector. In an old engine that used to be carbureted, it would be the carburetor. Now they're all fuel injected. Number 15, a dwell meter is used to measure an automobile's engine. A dwell meter actually looks at the distributor and measures the cam openings and the angles that they travel through. So the correct answer, answer A, dwell angle. In order to stop a car, brake shoes apply pressure to the axle, tires, drum, brake drums, or brake pedal. Um, well, there are two types of brakes in cars. One are discs, where you squeeze them with a the caliper, and the other is a drum, where a shoe pushes into a drum. So the correct answer is C, brake drum. Number 17, getting away from uh, automotive, back to, I guess, house repair. To thin paint, use turpentine, mineral spirits, benzene, varnish. Uh, the correct answer is turpentine, and that's going to allow you, it's a solvent, but it'll also be a good way to thin paint. If you made it this far, go ahead and give yourself a thumbs up for studying and making it happen. The more work you do to prepare for the ASVAB military placement exam, the better you're going to do. Uh, and if you're finding these videos helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up as well. 
Um, but either way, just keep studying to make sure you do the very best you can do on that exam. Your military career is going to ride on where you start. So start strong, finish strong. Number 18, the tip of a soldering iron is coated with solder. Before it is used, this process of the coating is called welding, brazing, soldering, or tinning. Uh, this is a hard one. It is, tinning is the correct answer. I don't know if you know that unless you've done some of that, but uh, answer D is the correct answer. Number 19, what is the most common type of battery used in cars and trucks? I mentioned that earlier. Uh, we use lead acid batteries primarily uh, to get that chemical reaction. That is creates a direct current versus AC, which is alternating current, which you're gonna get out of a motor. Any sort of chemical reaction is a direct current. And we primarily do that with lead acid, but there's a lot of changes in batteries and probably more to come. But the correct answer is B, lead acid. Number 20, our last problem, coolant flows through an engine is regulated by A, thermostat, B, heater, C, radiator, D, water hose. Um, you could probably eliminate, get this one even if you didn't know the correct answer, eliminate things that don't make sense where you're regulating the amount of flow, so water hose won't make sense. Radiators actually um, allows the fluid to cool. Heater, well that has nothing to do with it. And thermostat, thermostat A is the correct answer. That is a way to actually um, regulate the amount of flow. So when it's hot, uh, it allows a lot to flow through, and, and then when the engine's cold, it prevents it from flowing through, and that's what will heat the car up a little bit faster. Okay, well, hopefully this helped you a little bit. Uh, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. This is Colfax Math. Um, you know, learning these things is really from a lifetime of working in a shop. Again, these are just some sample type of practice problems that you might come across to give you a better idea, a better mindset going into that exam. So just keep studying, do the very best you can. That's all you can do. But the more you study, the better you'll do.